Hello everybody, this is Howard Crampton Jr. with Discovering Purpose. And uh, yesterday on my Facebook page I had posted a question and it was, when was the last time that you did something for the first time? I'll ask it again. When was the last time that you did something for the first time? <clears throat> you got the part of my voice today. I'm losing it a little bit. Well, it's interesting, these synchronicities and how they show up. And uh, I say they're interesting, and I'm always fascinated by them. But to be honest, they uh, they show up so often um, that, uh, I don't know, I just really, really appreciate them when they show up and how they show up. And I will always be fascinated, fascinated by how these synchronicities show up. And because I posted that question last night, and I wanted to see what other people had to say. Well... And for me, I'm, I'm doing new things all of the time. I, I like to get outside of my comfort zone and try new things regularly. Um, but I suppose it had been a little while, I mean, other than last week. But uh, I got news this morning that my grandma had passed away. And this was my, my dad's father, or <laughs> my dad's mother. And um, so as I sat and I got the news from my brother. And interestingly, my dad had forgot his phone I was, I've been working with my dad part-time and he forgot his phone at his house. So he had to leave the shop to go to his house. And as soon as he leaves, my aunt calls my brother and gives us the news of my grandmother's passing. So my brother comes over and tells me, and we've kind of been, you know, expecting something was going to happen sometime soon. And my dad even mentioned yesterday, you know, he wouldn't be surprised if she lasted the week or so. Um, just from the conversation they had had a couple days ago. So uh, I was kind of okay, you know, we were expecting something to happen soon. And then I started thinking about it. I started thinking about my dad and really had a lot of compassion for my dad and really was more concerned for him than my grandma. And what was coming up for me is my understanding of the process of life and death. And um, I don't really particularly even use the word death often because um, of the process of what life is itself and in the context how everything is energy. So energy is always moving in form through form, which is us now, and then out of form. Yet that energy and that spirit is still here. It's just transformed, transmutated. It's, you know, metamorphosized into something else. And um, so I started feeling kind of, again, more compassion and um, sorrow for him of how he was going to take it when he got the news, even though he had expect been expecting to. And then I thought, well, you know, yeah, I got to be strong. I have to be strong when he comes back. And it's funny because in uh, Bob Proctor's book, You Were Born Rich, in the chapter of um, The Razor's Edge, <clears throat> he shares a story about someone, what makes the difference of... Uh, the best of the best versus, you know, first and second place is what a doctor had quoted one time, how he rehearsed, he rehearsed, and then he rehearsed some more before he would go into operation. And it allowed him to be one of the best well-known doctors in the world. So I thought, well, that's what I have to do. I have to rehearse. When my dad comes back, I can't, I can't be weeping and I don't want to show up crying and, um, you know, make him cry. So I want to be strong for him and I really want to help him feel uplifted and elevated and, and, and appreciate this process, you know, and, and celebrate the life and, you know, let him know it's okay to mourn and stuff too, to allow whatever emotions that show up to flow. So I was going back and forth and back and forth. And this is the, the, in the context of our paradigms and this within our title too, our paradigms in this one paradigm with limited information, I was feeling sad and I was feeling not even compassion, but more sorrow and concern right and all these thoughts though kept coming in saying no you have to feel this way you know this is what people want you have to tell you have to say i'm sorry all right we have to tell people i'm sorry i mean what else are you supposed to say well there's so much more else to say than i'm sorry and uh so then i thought well no with understanding this process you understand the process like, she's not really gone she's still here right and uh this was the last of my you know in physical form grandparents um, who's, you know, now passed on, but she's still here. I believe her spirit is still alive and I have to hold that energy. And when my dad comes, I'm going to give him a big hug and he's going to feel really good and uplifted because I'm carrying that energy with me too. So I was going back and forth and back and forth and the power of these paradigms. And it's like, how are we supposed to feel? Right? 
Do you feel the way you do because you're supposed to, because somebody else told you that that's how you, how you have to feel? Do you feel certain ways because you look around your environment and you see other people reacting that way and you say, oh, well, if I act any other way, I might be judged. So I, I kind of have to fit in, right? Or, and these are all external uh, modes of uh, control or locus of control, uh, being externally stimulated versus internally stimulated. Or going within and saying, no, I, I, I truly understand. And I do, I have compassion for these people who want to believe in death as losing somebody. And that's okay. Uh, but I don't believe that myself. And, um, or maybe I do, but you know, I don't feel the way that they, they feel about it. So go within and ask yourself, are you feeling the way you're feeling? Because that's how you choose to feel. Or are you feeling a certain way because that's how you were conditioned to feel? And I don't mean somebody teaching you and telling you that you have to feel this way, but we're even conditioned again through looking at our environment and role modeling, modeling after what other people are doing, don't we? So with that said, I want to leave you with that. And uh, I really encourage you to leave your posts down below. If you would, please. Um, I often don't say please a lot to leave a blog post, but this isn't a typical blog for me. This is helping other people. And it's why I share this. And I want you to share your stories of how you may have overcome grief, um, sadness, you know, in the process of um, somebody passing on in your life. And uh, what you share, somebody else might really take to. It might resonate really, really well with them. And despite what anybody else shares, they might resonate, they might not resonate with anybody else. So that's why it's important that we do speak up and that we share as hard as it might be. You know, a way that you were able to look at the situation that you were able to perceive it a new paradigm that you had discovered that really helped you through the process and maybe some steps that you took to get through it um, please if you would down below uh, I'm sure so many other people would really really appreciate it and for all you who are going through some form of grief and sadness depression uh, I strongly encourage you to reach out to me at info at howardcramptonjr.com I would love to sit down and, and talk with you through the process I don't claim to be an expert with uh, grief, but I do have plenty of resources. Uh, typically with depression, which is something different, is more my field. Um, but I can give you some support. I can offer you some support just to even listen if that's what you so choose. You don't want to hear anything. You don't want feedback. You don't want advice. You just need an ear. You let me know. We can schedule a call. I'll be that ear for you. And if you are looking for some support, I have some tools I can offer you, but I also have more resources uh, depending on how severe your grief may be that you're going through, uh, such as a woman named Aurora Winter. I'll throw her name out there right now. I don't know her personally, but I know um, what she does, and I know she's very, very effective in how she treats people for well-being. So I'll leave you with that. Again, send me an email, info at howardcramptonjr.com. You can go to howardcramptonjr.com and find some more of these videos that might help with uh, any type of sadness, depression, grief along the way. Okay, uh, or give me a call, 661-524-6093. I'll leave you with that post below, and um, namaste.